Hey, it's Mike here, and today, LSD and life extension, another rare drug video, which is definitely gonna be demonetized. But yeah, we have a recent study on this, which led to a lot of headlines, and I'm quite sure a lot of dudes out there just popping tabs like potato chips just at the thought of this. So we gotta bring them back down to ground level here and look at the research, look at what they actually found and what the mechanisms are, which are fascinating. But if you are currently on LSD, there is no filter on me that is purely within your mind. <laughs> no, I'm joking. All right, let's go. It's gonna be a short one. Let's get started. All right, lightning fast reminder of what LSD is and how it acts on the brain because that is key here to understanding the study. What is it, first of all? LSD is what demonetizes this video for sure. Talking about lysergic acid, dimethylamide. And I'm just gonna say it right now. Look at that word. Why abbreviated LSD instead of LAD? Like a lad who likes berries and cream. Berries and cream, berries and cream. I'm a little lad who loves berries and cream. Gotta love those 2000s ads. It's a synthetic hallucinogenic drug that was first discovered or synthesized in the late 1930s and then first accidentally taken by the inventor in the early 40s. What a way to find out. And the psychedelic effect mechanism for LSD is on our serotonin receptors. It activates various serotonin receptors, but in particular, it is the 5-HT2A receptor that leads to hallucination, but it also acts on dopamine a bit on those receptors, unlike some other serotonin activators. All right, now let's get directly into the study, and I will say that this is a preprint, and I don't think that's a reason to write it off. For example, 70% of preprints now go on to be published subsequently, and only 0.01 are retracted. So it doesn't mean that it's 100% accurate, but it's higher quality than most people are probably expecting. And the study's main limitation here is its subjects, a unique type of psychonaut known as T. norhabditis elegans, or just the roundworm which is a nematode microscopic worm. I recently covered some of those in my parasite video that nobody watched. You're still not gonna watch it. So yeah, this is unfortunately an animal study. I don't particularly like them for various ethical reasons. This one at least is not just chopping up a bunch of highly sentient animals. This is giving some hallucinogens to some worms or a control and then seeing which ones live longer. And to the results, we have a 25% increased lifespan in the LSD worms. Good band name, LSD worms. The only worm known to be exposed to LSD before this was RFK's brain worm. <laughs> but is that even a lot? 25%, it seems like a lot. And we can compare it to some other drugs that are given to these nematodes. We're talking about spermidine, which is generally between 10 and 30%. So so that's on the higher end of that. Also rapamycin, which acts on that mTOR aging pathway, which we'll talk about in a little bit, tends to really only get 10% or less extension in these animals, but then more dramatic gene changes can even double lifespan for these worms. So yeah, of course we don't have a lifespan related study in humans, but the study itself does cite various literature talking about the lower disease rates in people that take these serotonin type hallucinogens for what it's worth. Yeah, the study found a 23% lower odds of cardiovascular disease for those who had taken psychedelics in their lifetime, although they echo that there could be many confounding factors they didn't account for, though they did account for quite a bit. So that's a little bit of a stretch, but at least a background for the research. And they say, hey, they might have lived longer, but did they actually live happier, healthier, little wormy lives? <laughs> Is there any direct result in terms of health span? And for that, they looked at a marker called lipofusin. In my notes, I wrote not to be confused with liposuction, but I'm not gonna make that joke. <laughs> but lipofusin is more or less metabolic waste that builds up its proteins, etc., that have a dark colored pigment. Lipofusin is also a component of those age spots in skin along with melanin. So they're really junk that our body gets worse at dealing with over time and they are not neutral. They can have negative effects like oxidative stress, which of course accelerates aging. So these are actually building up inside of cells. They can build up in neurons, which is not good. And they can just degrade cellular function. But they say, Crow, we demonstrate that the LSD increases longevity. This effect is accompanied by a reduction in the lipofusin accumulation, suggesting not only an extended lifespan, but also healthier aging. And this is where the mechanism comes in. And it's interesting because they're claiming that these worms are seeing calorie restriction traits without actually restricting calories. And of course we can see some longevity-based calorie restriction benefit. And that comes back to the just evolutionary idea of these boom and bust periods 
And when we have a bunch of excess calories and we're eating a lot of food, we turn over our reproductive cycles faster, we grow our tissues faster, and that can lead to more mutations, cancer, and just faster aging. But then in times of scarcity, we eat less, we have the sort of preservation mode that can kick in, and that's why that can be connected to longevity. Calorie restriction can be associated with things like autophagy, where we start essentially recycling our own tissues. And that could be one reason that there's less of this lipofusin buildup, because it's being cleared out. But that boom or bust phenomenon that we have is highly connected to the mTOR pathway, which is again, highly connected to aging and even cancer. And they say, quote, in our study, the biphasic response observed suggests a temporal shift in TOR signaling. This aligns with the hypothesis that acute psychedelic induced mTOR activation transitions into an inhibitory state with prolonged exposure. So it downregulates mTOR, which would downregulate aging. And rapamycin is a drug that also downregulates mTOR, which we've previously seen increase the lifespan of animals like these worms. So it all matches up. And they're saying that it is actually the serotonin activation itself from these receptors that can down the line signal this aging pathway and downregulate it. So if we're to spell this out, we're talking about LSD, increasing serotonin receptor activity, then downregulating aging pathways, downregulating this lipofusin or that aging pigment, and then resulting in 25% longer lifespan for these worms. They say, quote, the longevity effects of LSD exhibit parallels with those of serotonin tonergic transporter inhibitors, such as various SSRIs, which extend lifespan in C. elegans by modulating serotonin receptor pathway. But this is where we have to hop into the world of humans and ask, do SSRIs and SNRIs, which both boost serotonin, increase lifespan? Do they lower mortality even in the epidemiology? And we have even just mixed results. On the positive end, it's pretty expected to see people with depression having a lower rate of mortality from one study up to 50% lower mortality on these types of drugs. But then giving it to other populations, we get a mixed result. And we're talking about maybe about 30% of studies show a positive result. But the issue here is that people taking those types of drugs have a ton of confounders that can muddy the data and it's not on LSD. So obviously we need a human LSD study, hopefully a microdose, so people don't end up, you know, just trying to fly or walk through moving cars. And then on another note, I would say that there's a bit more robust data for psilocybin's active ingredient, psilocin, increasing lifespan in mice, which is a mammal closer to us. I still don't think it's necessary to do that. I think you can get enough people to sign up for some studies here. The mushroom mice survived so much better that when half of the control mice had passed away, only 20% of the mushroom mice did. And as you can see, they looked visibly younger in the mushroom group. And this is likely due to how they did not have any shortening of those DNA protecting telomeres, which is crazy. But if I had to hypothesize about that, because mushrooms contain chitin, if you don't remove the chitin, there potentially could be a negative effect because it could fuel Alzheimer's, just the way that it can build up in the brain. And that was the concern for eating crickets because not only do they have high cholesterol, but their shell contains chitin. Mushrooms also use chitin. And so yeah, removing that would probably be an obvious step. So yeah, in the end, fascinating mechanisms here. I would have never thought to even try this, like LSD for lifespan, like what? That's not what people are generally using it for. I also think that we really need to hurry up and start a human trial now because even just the existence of this study is probably gonna lead people to try to self-medicate for longevity by taking LSD or just using this as an excuse, which I would suggest against. And since this video was demonetized, I should just mention for, I'd say probably the last time that there is just one or two open spots on the grease strips, which are coming up really fast. I think one is about to be sold out. So we'll see if it's even there. But yeah, it's gonna be an awesome trip to the Athens ruins and multiple islands. So click below if you're interested in that. And of course, feel free to let me know down below what you think about all of this research. And of course, feel free to like, subscribe and all that good stuff and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.